Now, uh, if you see from the computation engine, the processors, okay, so uh, is, is the basic computation engine. And, and as you know that uh, you cannot uh, increase the clock speed anymore due to the end of donor scaling and, 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 and the power wall is hitting and that's why you cannot get more than a particular fixed clock frequency that is available nowadays in the in the processors or, or computation engines so how we will get much more compute density uh, so uh, in in terms of speed we want to increase the density as well as computation engine because you have to have the flexibility of including more number of transistors in a chip so that is that is fine and in terms of uh, clock speed also you cannot increase the clock speed anymore. So compute density, you cannot increase uh, after, after a certain limit. So what the traditional systems or, 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 or the modern systems uh, are uh, going towards uh, is that this uh, heterogeneous computing. So here you have the serial tasks or, or mostly the parallel workloads, okay, which, which are not that much of data intensive. They are being, uh, controlled or they are being executed by the processor itself. So that might be multi-core processor, single core processor. So in this particular figure, you are seeing that it has a, a dual core processor. Now, uh, also in addition to, to processing engines to uh, get the data parallel workloads executed, we have specialized computing engines. And these specialized computing engines are called accelerators. Of course, uh, you, you will see several accelerators that are being used uh, for, for particularly AI benchmarks uh, nowadays. But in this slide, uh, uh, you can see that one GPU is there to, uh, to handle these data parallel workloads, right? And one such accelerator or, or specialized system that you have seen in the last slide is Cerebra's wafer scale engine, right? So now the tradition is what? Divide your task into different subtasks. And of course, uh, this, this, uh, the data parallel workloads. So mostly these AI benchmarks that we are talking about. So from the AI benchmarks for perspective, these AI benchmarks or AI algorithm, those will be executed by these accelerators. So that is why we are talking about GPUs, and because uh, because of what that you will see in the in the in the subsequent slides, but the main main important thing is that we have now accelerators uh, 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 in the system in the computing system uh, with along with the processors. Okay, so that is that is the main uh, takeaway from this slide. So now, what kind of uh, accelerators that are available nowadays? So we talk about specialized computation engines for AI benchmarks, right? And over the years that you can see here, uh, uh, this graph shows uh, uh, the trends from 2012 to 2020. Uh, and, and you can see now different computation engines, okay? So we'll, we'll discuss them very briefly here. So what we have, we have ASICs. So ASICs are ASIC engines or application specific integrated circuits. Okay. So uh, these ASICs are mostly specialized, like highly specialized only for the AI benchmarks. And also we have GPUs available in this, uh, in this graph. Now GPUs can give you the flexibility to run both AI benchmarks as well as let's say video or graphics uh, benchmarks as well. Okay. So 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 now you you can you can uh, you can just try to realize like how much generalized way of computing that can happen. So you have the processors which are very very generalized. So maybe the uh, the you can say that general purpose computing engine. Like you can do everything in the computing uh, in your processors. Now you have ASICs, which are highly specialized only for uh, only for AI benchmarks. Here we talk about AI-based ASICs. Of course, for any other application domain, you can have 
different ASICs as well. And we have GPUs, which are graphics processing unit, graphical processing unit. So which has now, nowadays have the flexibility of uh, uh, accelerating your uh, AI benchmarks as well. Why that we will see in the, in the coming slides. But you can see here, what are the things available here? So ASICs, GPUs with, with FP32. So what is FP32? That is floating point 32. Now this is data type. Okay. So uh, now data type and the accuracy that you have seen for the AI benchmarks have very close relations. Okay. So that relationship we will talk about. And you have your uh, GPU int also eight. Int eight means eight bit integer units. Okay. GPUs with eight bit integer units. GPUs with 32 bit floating point units. So 32 bit floating point units means single precision floating point units. You can have double precision floating point units as well, which will be then 64 bits, right? And these ASICs are a highly customized uh, bit level implementation of computing systems for AI benchmarks. And that is why you can see that the performance density is much higher in these ASICs, okay? Because uh, they are only speci specialized in running AI benchmarks only for given uh, uh, data type of given precision, okay? So their performance uh, density or COPS per millimeter square performance per area is, is much more higher. GPU is much more generalized in terms of it, it can both accelerate your uh, uh, AI benchmarks as well as your uh, video processing as well, graphics processing. And it has, uh, it has almost closer uh, uh, or, 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 or almost similar of performance density that is uh, being achieved nowadays. And, and the trend you can see, right? So this, uh, this yellow line is the trend for your GPU AP32, which is almost generalized uh, GPUs that you can get in the, in the, in the market nowadays. And, and very uh, few are, so basically if you see that integer eight, so basically these are with having these GPUs with RTX 2080, T4, V100. So these are also having the flexibility to run your uh, fixed point eight bit, right, uh, units. Now, what is the relationship I was talking about between the accuracy of the uh, benchmarks, AI benchmarks, and the bit precision? Okay, so the more you have or, or more precision available in, in the computation, for your AI benchmarks, the accuracy will be higher. So this is the simple relationship. Now, how you want to get a higher computing density? You can reduce the size of, of the feature size, feature, right? So uh, you can, in, the, in this box here, you can see that different sizes of feature map that is available. Now you want to have much more gobs per millimeter square. Okay, so that is, you, you want to accommodate much more compute or, or you want to achieve much more compute density uh, 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 available for your systems. So you will go for uh, uh, lower, uh, uh, lowering your feature size, which is let's say seven nanometer or eight nanometer that is available, that is CMOS technology that is being uh, used to, to manufacture these chips like uh, uh, a V100 series of, uh, NVIDIA GPU and, and, and also uh, around 28 nanometer is being used for this Dian Nano. This is one ASIC based version of uh, Dian Nano, which was published in the year of 2014. And in 2016, TPU was published. Okay, so first version of TPU. So this is Tensor Processing Unit published by Google. And uh, that is also ASIC based and uh, you have Cambricon, uh, Iris. This was published from the uh, research group of MIT, EIE. So several ASIC-based implementations are there that you can see and they, uses, uh, they use several uh, feature map size. So basically the size of these diamonds specify what kind of uh, uh, feature map they are using. 
Now, with decreasing the feature maps, that means you can accommodate more compute uh, units inside your chip, right? So that means you can increase the performance density, cops per millimeter square, right? So how far you can go? Of course, you cannot go beyond certain limit. So feature map size or, or technology scaling, you cannot do, uh, let's say beyond uh, one nanometer nowadays, uh, you cannot go beyond that, right? So that means there is a, a certain level of uh, uh, performance per, uh, performance density that you can achieve. So there is a limit that you can achieve, okay? So that is the main, idea that you will get from this slide. So the takeaway is, so what is the trend? You can see the trend of uh, different uh, uh, computation engines in terms of GPUs here, you can see uh, what are their performance density in terms of cops per millimeter square. And also the systems that are available with different feature map sizes. Okay, so higher uh, uh, compute density will be achieved by lower feature map sizes. So that is the intuition, uh, intuitive idea that, that, that is very easy to understand, right? So uh, now you, you, you want to achieve, uh, you, you have seen from the previous section uh, that uh, your uh, compute density is kind of exponentially increasing. Okay? And your computation engine is kind of limited with this feature map sizes. You cannot, put much more than, than that resource can, can allow you, right? So these are the two more, uh, much more important uh, uh, conclusions that we will take away after this slide. Now, next, uh, what we will do is that we'll go into some details of uh, evaluation of different uh, GPUs uh, from the mainstream NVIDIA GPUs that are available in market nowadays and they have functional uh, number of functional units that are available. So increased number of functional units. So you can see that you are increasing the performance density and, and number of bobs or, or giga flops per second that you are achieving much more. So currently we have Ampere series of, uh, of uh, NVIDIA GPU, which has uh, several thousands of functional units that are available inside this. Uh, inside these GPUs, okay? So we, we will see a uh, 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 much more clear way, like uh, in, a, in a very uh, coarser array, like what are the things available and how you can program them in the, in the next lecture, but we will see some abstraction of these uh, or, or, or some features of these uh, modern uh, GPUs, which are available and also, uh, uh, modern SX, which are available and their performances, how they can run. Okay. So uh, in 2017, uh, NVIDIA released V100, uh, that is called a series of NVIDIA GPU and Ampere series of GPU was, uh, was released in the year of 2020. And you can see that NVIDIA, in NVIDIA's terminology, uh, this uh, V100 comprises of 5,000, around 5,000 stream processors, so basically 80 cores with 64 CMD functional units, okay? And, uh, and, uh, and the uh, Ampere series having, this A100 having around 7,000 of stream processors, which can be interpreted as 1,108 cores with 64 CMD functional units. So these are the processing cores uh, or, or uh, this SM uh, uh, stream processors that you can see here. It is having L2 cache also, uh, and it has also dynamic memory or DRAM, so which is this AHBM2 that you are seeing here, and the, the other interface that is available on this particular uh, systems. Now, uh, the basic difference of this two you can see here, of course, uh, in the microarchitecture level, there, there are differences that, that you will see, but, uh, but from the memory point of view, you can see that L2 cache is now in the, in the Ampere series, it is kind of uh, uh, banked into two uh, banks. Okay, so L, L2 cache one and L2 cache two. 
And here in the Bolter series, the previous series having uh, only one cache name. And that is just to increase the throughput and, and, and reduce the latency of memory accesses. Okay. So now we, you can see that how much increase in the number of cores that can be accommodated in, into, into one particular system. Okay. So from 80 cores to 108 cores in two years. Okay. You can you can imagine like how much uh, progress that is happening and, and how these, these uh, systems are getting scaled. Uh, now, from the point of uh, view of precision, you can see that the tensor uh, these these series of uh, uh, GPUs having tensor cores. Okay? So tensor cores for machine learning is available in your Volta series in the uh, NVIDIA P100 as well as your Ampere series. But this having new floating point data type as TF32, okay? So that gives a bit more flexibility in terms of uh, model training or benchmark training that, that, that we'll be discussing in, in the coming classes. But it supports also sparsity in the in machine learning computer or, or AI benchmark. So these two are very important uh, things to understand from the algorithmic point of view, okay? So uh, you can accommodate more number of computing cores, and now your uh, your your cores also having tensor cores, which are specialized in machine learning. Now, if you see uh, the NVIDIA core, one core itself, you can see that. So this is the core of V100. You can see that these are having this uh, floating point 64. So this is double precision in it, integer units. So basically, these are uh, integer uh, units for Mac operations. So all these are Mac units. So the, you can see here, floating point 16, two will be multiplied and accumulated with the 32 bit of floating point, then it will generate 32 bit of data, right? So uh, this, this are, these are floating point 32 bit unit, as you can see here. And then along with these uh, CMD processing units, you have tensor cores. And what does this tensor code do is that tensor core actually uh, does this matrix multiplication in one side. So basically four cores, four matrix multiplication will be done in one side, one clock cycle to be precise. Now, uh, why matrix multiplication is uh, is necessary and why we are telling or, or why we are uh, calling them tensor, uh, tensor core. So basically the data uh, uh, is uh, these tensor cores are employed or designed specifically to run AI benchmarks, which are deep neural network based or uh, convolutional neural network based uh, to be precise. So these convolutional neural network based uh, computations need the, the, the main engine is the convolution engine. And the convolution can be trans uh, uh, transferred or, or interpreted as matrix multiplication. It can be converted to matrix multiplication. So if you have matrix multiplication unit inside your uh, CMD of matrix multiplication unit, you can perform the entire tensor of like set of input data. So basically these two sets of data you can see, 16 uh, cross 16 plus uh, you, you can accumulate another uh, 16, which is already there. So in the, in the accumulator, and you will get the data of 16 uh, uh, entire. So basically 16 Mac operations you are doing in the one set. And that is how you can increase the throughput in, uh, in, in many fold. And that is the purpose of these tensor cores that are available in, in modern computing engines. Now, uh, we are talking about uh, tensor cores. So that was the core available in the, the previous generation of NVIDIA GPUs, which are uh, V100. And then uh, we now have an Ampere series of uh, GPUs. And here you can see uh, in the cores, you can see this uh, register file is there, shared register file. And then you have this uh, uh, symmetry of integer 32, then floating point 32, floating point 64. So it supports all these different precisions of computations you can see, okay? So all these units, uh, basically this 32 unit, uh, 32 bit fixed point, 32 bit floating point, 64 bit floating point, all these units 
are mostly used in in uh, accelerating your uh, your video processing and, and and graphics benchmarks and tensor cores are mostly used for your uh, ai benchmarks okay so so that is why the the modern gpus that are coming with more number of tensor cores and 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 the tensor core in the mps series is even much more flexible than the earlier series so there is a notion of sparsity in inside your uh, training or 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 inference in your ai benchmarks so what is sparsity sparsity means uh, you can have multiple weights or parameters which are very close to zero can be interpreted as as zero and if you think from computation point of view so if you have let's say four cross four matrix multiplier and if your let's say half of the data is let's say zero then you do not need to compute those for those particular half number of uh, multiplication so that means uh, of course that will be manifold for uh, for your 2d matrix multiplication but you get the idea right so so basically for where uh, one operand is zero you just don't don't do the multiplications so in 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 terms of energy efficiency in terms of throughput you can in you can increase it manifold okay so that is why the sparsity in the matrix multiplication is introduced in this tensor force that are available in, in ampere series okay okay so uh, in overall idea like uh, uh, voltage series the, the t4 series the rtx series so what kind of uh, uh, performance or density they are getting with with particular uh, power envelope that you can see here in this table uh, again this table is taken from this reference and of course i will give the link of this reference that you can go through after this class but the main important thing is that you can increase the density here you can see only take particular for v100 and for v100 you can see that almost 10 times uh, 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 increase of performance density you can get just by using mixed uh, precision so mixed precision means in the in the whole computation engine you can, you can have 8 to 32 bits of of, of multiply and accumulate and 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 with full precision full means the double precision you you can see the gops and and uh, one order magnitude you can get uh, the, uh, more performance density in 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 32 bit and even more you can get in, if you go for mixed uh, precision so precision compute density the, the 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 energy the you can see all they are in the same power envelope okay so in the same power envelope without uh, either without inducing more energy you are actually uh, getting much more performance density okay but of course again just to uh, uh, connect to that graph that we saw before is that you cannot increase beyond certain point because the feature size you cannot decrease beyond certain point. okay uh, if you could decrease beyond certain point then you you will go to atomic level of of uh, uh, of feature map size and but that is just theoretical okay so beyond one nanometer uh, it is it is very difficult because the the energy the the temperature that will be generated by the process uh, processing engines will be much much higher and it will be hard to uh, contain the uh, amount of temperature that will be generated okay so that's why you cannot go beyond a certain level of uh, uh, feature uh, size scaling now in terms of apga based accelerators apgs are fully uh, reconfigurable and, and and this is uh, the abbreviation of field programmable gate addis uh, which are field programmable means uh, these are mostly uh, 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 bit level configurable devices. Now, in the APGS, uh, 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 of course, you can employ uh, different ASIC level accelerators because it is fully configurable. But this slide presents different performances of different ASICs that are available. So what are different ASICs that are available? We have the TPU, which is tensor processing unit from Google. So V1 is essentially only for, uh, only was published for inferencing. 
but now it is uh, v2 v3 and other uh, versions are employed in uh, google data centers uh, for uh, large scale uh, deep neural networks training and all these computation engines that you can see here they are uh, essentially array of processing elements or or they are called systolic array based uh, uh, engines and these uh, processing engines as you can see these are just array of multiply and accumulate engines and to feed the huge number of processing engines you can see 12 cross 14 multiplication engines that are being employed in one this is the first version of the tpu we are talking about and and one scratch pad memory is deployed to just feed this data hungry uh, uh, processing engines okay and then you have the object DRAM to uh, uh, to offload the data to your scratch pad so this this is the kind of architecture of asic based accelerators or asic based specialized ai engines that are available nowadays and this is one picture uh, of uh, 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 Dadi and Nano that you are seeing here, and you can see that the GOPS that that can be achieved is is much more higher. Uh, with of course, with uh, you can see that how much in a, uh, power it, it is consuming. But of course, these are in terms of milliwatt, whereas uh, whereas the power consumed by these GPUs are in in terms of watt, as you can see, because of course they are much more generalized in terms of computing systems. And these are much more specialized because these are only for, uh, uh, they only deploy uh, only uh, this fixed precision or mixed precision multiply and accumulate engines only for these uh, processing engines. And that is why they consume much more, uh, much less uh, power, as you can see here. And uh, of course, uh, the FPGA based accelerators, as I was mentioning, that these arrays that you saw. In the, in the AC based accelerators, they can be actually configured or programmed into the FPGA to emulate one uh, one compute engine. Okay? So this is basically the, the figure of that array of multiply and accumulate processing engines and the memory hierarchy. And these engines are basically this convolution engines. These are problems and then you have multiply and accumulate. And then you have the uh, final uh, the tree of uh, the multiply and accumulate engines. And then you have the uh, and the final output. Okay, so all these AI benchmarks are mostly uh, to to uh, to train your uh, uh, deep neural network benchmarks uh, to be precise. Well, from the market share point of view, so uh, what kind of market shares uh, in, in, in these uh, these companies have in terms of different engines like GPU and FPGA based? So GPU based, of course. Uh, uh, market is is uh, uh, fastly dominated by Nvidia, 72.8% uh, and rest of the market uh, is so these are the stocks of uh, after 2018 financial year. So uh, now the, the the ratio might have changed slightly, but overall you can get the idea. And then we have uh, in the APG domain we have Xilinx, Altera, Microsemi, and Lattice Semiconductors. Uh, which has very uh, few share. Well, uh, these are the uh, the systems that are available nowadays. Now we are talking about the gap. So, so this gap I uh, several times mentioned in the in the previous slides. We will just again go through this gap uh, just to uh, summarize whatever we have uh, studied. So, right? So what is the gap about? The gap is about, so to get particular uh, accuracy level. So if you want to get linear increase in accuracy, okay? So you need to exponentially increase the computation density. Okay? So this is the, the takeaway. This was the takeaway from the left, uh, left hand side graph. And the systems that are available, we, we know that mixed precision and different precision we can employ and we can have much more performance density. But of course, there is some limit and, and we cannot go beyond certain limit of, of performance density, right? 
so so the trend to if you see the computation uh, requirement trend that is going exponentially and the resources that are available the trend is is kind of uh, uh, getting saturated right because this the feature size is almost going to to your uh, uh, nanometer uh, level right so now how we can bridge this gap we we want to accelerate the ai that means the be benchmark that we talked about so these benchmarks like all these different benchmarks that we 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 have seen and few of these we will see in details in in the coming classes because we need to employ or, or we need to implement them for for a particular target device right now the gap is there okay so this this computational uh, uh, a uh, requirement or or, or the the, uh, the requirement of the computational density is going high exponentially and and the performance density is getting saturated so how we can accelerate some beyond certain okay? so that is this course all about we will learn how to accelerate the ai benchmarks that we have seen with the systems that are available nowadays with us and how to employ several techniques from algorithmic to uh, different configurations in, in training, how we can, with, with different uh, uh, libraries, with, with different SDKs, how we can actually uh, employ uh, efficiently these benchmarks onto these systems. That is the goal of this course. And we will see uh, the implementation or, or how we, will, we can implement on these systems that are available in the coming lectures. So to conclude, uh, we have these references. So you can see that uh, we have the reference uh, uh, from Professor Mutlu. So you can you can learn about the memory systems, the, the state of the memory technologies that are available nowadays, and and of course about the the, the basics of these neural networks, the specific uh, the specialized computation engine. They are performance and how this scaling happening from the algorithmic innovation point of view as well as from the uh, from the system level point of view and how we can actually merge them to get uh, better uh, computation and, and, and energy efficient computation performance wise and high accuracy computation for these benchmarks uh, you refer this uh, paper well that's uh, all about uh, for today.